uh, thanks for having me on your show, uh, your little podcast, and uh, yeah, um, looking forward to speaking to you. Yeah, maybe you can introduce yourself first, um, just how you got yeah. into the industry, etc. Sure. Uh, so my name is Henry Wong. I'm currently uh, a visual development artist and concept artist in the industry. Uh, how do should I should I talk about how I start, got into the industry? Or yeah, it's interesting. I, like maybe your school. Did you go to school at all? Yeah, or? sure. So uh, so I started up. My BA was fine art and art history, uh, but I didn't really like the course. Um, but they, they had this really good uh, life drawing teacher there, uh, who is like a, a Royal Academy portrait painter. And he really taught me the ropes about anatomy and painting and life drawing. Cool. Oh, was there a lag? There was a lag. Uh, no problem. Okay. I think it's like okay. Skype is like always causing some issues. But uh, yeah, I think the only thing that was missing in the beginning, like which. So it was an art school or what did you say? Yeah, so I went to Plymouth University uh, for uh, fine art and art history. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah. did you know already back uh, then you were going into game arts, film art? No, at all? no. So I didn't figure any of that out until I studied for my MA. So with the figure drawing class, I, I compiled like a massive sketchbook of life drawing and applied to um, this art school in London called Central St. Martins mm -hmm. uh, for character animation and for some reason they accepted me so I, I got to discover what animation is about but the thing is I have no background in animation I don't know how to use Photoshop I don't know how to use uh, you know TV paint or, or uh, animate or flash I, I was super noob i didn't know anything about animation i just knew like right. oh i love anime i love disney let's see what i could do and it was really really difficult um but whilst i was in this ma it was a two-year course uh with my portfolio i applied to a lot of local studios and one of the studios i applied for was opus arts and they were nice enough just to look at my crappy portfolio of anatomy drawings it was like yeah come in as a part-time intern and they brought me in and I had to learn Photoshop uh, with their team and Opus Arts uh, was an outsourcing uh, game company uh, like and they take in basically like work from uh, bigger studios and just sort of uh, do concept art stuff uh, but it was really difficult because I literally didn't know how to use Photoshop so I was trying to learn Photoshop but at the same time I don't know how to draw I thought I knew how to draw. I didn't know how to draw. Like I was like, oh yeah, I, I could do like and anatomy. First time probably um, working on a tablet as well. Yeah, the, on a tablet. Which is weird. Was, yeah. Uh, just I'm just this completely naive idiot <laughs> went to London and somehow got into animation school and also was interning at a concept art um, a concept art studio um, in game and I was just learning on the fly and the first three to six months was a nightmare for me because I was my brain was just being crammed with so much information like learning how frames work uh, at art school and learning how timing and all these and gesture and whilst in uh, you know concept art I was learning about composition and shape and design and uh, you know all that sort of junk so uh, it, it was crazy. So the education uh, after after the education. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. stuff they don't yeah. teach you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't recommend people do it how I did it. Uh, I was. <laughs> don't learn how I learned because uh, uh, it it was very stressful and not the easiest of times. Um, but yeah, from that um, after the two years in my MA course and working as a part-time intern at the studio. The studio was nice enough to take me on as full-time, uh, like a junior concept artist. And from there, I worked my way up there for about uh, three years and became a full-time concept artist, uh, like uh, like mid-rank concept artist at their studio. And um, around 2019, uh, I went freelance 
and now I'm working mostly in the animation side of things as opposed to games, but I have worked on some games and working on some indie projects and stuff as well. Okay, so how many years are you in? Like, do you did your winter art school and then um, like how many years did it take you uh, to? So art school is about two years and then I became a, oh man, I can't remember the years, but this is technically my, it's getting close to my fifth year as a professional mm -hmm. now. So I'm pretty new to the industry. I'm not, I'm not a grizzled veteran by any chance. I'm still trying to figure my way out, my way through things and stuff and see how the industry works and trying to learn new skills. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just surviving somehow <laughs> and I'm doing all right. No, it's good. I think, um, it's pretty inspiring for some people who are starting out to to hear how people got into the industry and also, you know, um, to hear about struggles or um, issues they have or they face when they start out. Um, what was your biggest issue you were talking about? Was it being in the studio kind of already a new experience? Um, yeah. Did you? Did you learn a lot while you were working? Like um, at night when you would come home, did you feel you, there were still a lot of things you would have to look into and yeah, you were way behind? Yeah, I I felt like I was just behind on everything. I, I felt like I went to this animation school whilst everyone had, I felt like everyone had an idea about animation. Some people came even from like illustration course, Right. whilst I came from this, uh, I, I didn't dislike my fine art, art history course, but the thing, the only thing that I felt like I only took away from it was critical thinking. But I didn't think that the amount of money I paid to acquire critical thinking was justified. The, and the only thing that made it worth it was the fact that they had this really incredible technician who was this life drawing teacher and he taught me at least some of the basics um sorry what was i talking about again like so yeah some uh, stuff um what did you do besides working in a studio for yourself to get to get better yeah um so basically i just you know i tried my best um you know what the people at my studio told me uh like to learn you know like learning about shapes and ratios about big medium small i'll go back home and then try to do it at home myself or on my little sketchbook and try to figure it out um or you know i think at the time about it's like five six years ago now like gum road and stuff was still a thing but i i certainly don't think it's as big as it is now it seems like everyone has a gum road or right. or uh, um, some sort of tutorial or online lesson but i i was getting these uh like uh, packages that my studio was providing me and i was just trying to do all these tutorials and um, i don't know did how... you read a lot as well like were there books or something um that yeah you read yeah so i i think i was reading like uh, Richard Williams' book on animation. Um, I think there was another book about animation gestures called Force. Uh, uh, Andrew Loomis, of course. Uh, Hogarth. Just trying to take as much information as I can, but I don't know if people remember what it's like to be a, a new a new person in art. But when you don't fully understand these concepts it's it's just like you you just end up copying how they set up their grids but without really truly understanding how perspective and how all these things work it, it was very frustrating but little by little just by grinding i i felt like i was getting it and it, and that's kind of how i uh i guess i uh kind of how i do things nowadays i i feel like i was never the most talented i never felt like i was the quickest learner either but i felt like one thing that i had and something that i learned from maybe my parents is just like perseverance just like just 
just sticking my head down and just doing two things for repetition and then hopefully I get it. So yeah. being patient and just uh, take the time to, to you know, to soak, let it all soak in, or to um, yeah, just as you said, pers being persistent in what you're already doing, right? But it's, it's really struggle, especially when you start out and you don't have the confidence, right? That mm -hmm. you feel like oh, you're not making progress, and it takes a lot of time. Um, it's not like there is no shortcut, right? Um, right? Something what I liked was actually the James Garney art uh, book, uh, Color and Light. Oh, you know that yeah, one? Yeah, I had that. Yeah, I remember studying that. Yeah. I, I felt that was a game changer for me because there were so many things that I all of a sudden saw um, when you were going around and you were looking around in nature, what, like how the, the light um, reacts in terms of like when there's it's overcast or it's sunny and so on how was it for you how did you did you go through you know yeah I, I like especially when you start to because you're doing a lot life. of studies as well right sorry that I interrupt you but you do a lot of studies and I could imagine yeah, like yeah. right now it's like this over um, yeah, like there's too much stuff that you know uh, that that you see in within the world that has kind of an uh, an impact. How you do art and, and you look around and there is so much stuff that inspires you, right? Right. Yeah. Um. Just like the James Gurney book was probably uh, one of the big inspirations for colors as well, just because um, you know just I, I just remember one in particular where you was talking about like overcast weather and how even though things start to desaturate, there's certain things that get looks more saturated and also um, the color is actually truer to what the original base color is. And it, it I'm very bad at explaining this thing. It's probably why I'm not a teacher. Um, <laughs> but just seeing like colors like red in particular in overcast, it just pops out more. But then when you maybe take a photo of the scene that you're seeing and then you color pick and you see what the red is it's not like super red it's not high on the spectrum of saturation it's actually somewhere down the middle and you see that everything when it's overcast it's kind of like a more muted um, middle of the line sort of saturation it's very interesting once you sort of see these things yeah and trying to figure it out for yourself from real life um, but all sorts of things, just like, you know, the James Gurney book taught me, like, like, why is my shadow blue? It's because it's reflecting from the sky, probably. Yeah, yeah. You know, things are influencing it. Like, things don't just happen in uh, isolation. There's actually different types of lights that influence it, bounce light and uh, the ambience and stuff. Right. Yeah, that's really interesting. Did you, um, how much time did you spend back then doing... You know, doing your own thing at night, and how much time do you sacrifice right now? Because you're doing now those daily studies and sketches. Yeah. Right. Um. Nowadays, um. So whilst at the studio or at university, I think I was doing like at least eight hours, like working hours, eight eight to nine hours working hours, learning concept art or animation. Uh, but when I got home, I spent anywhere between like an hour to th three hours. But it often went up to three hours because I, I was just as you're a new person. Tunnel. Yeah, you're, you're in, in the, the tunnel, tunnel. But also, things that you see professionals do, and you're like, oh, they did it in an hour. Yeah. I was trying to do it, but it, I just couldn't understand how they could do it so fast, and I wasn't understanding that they have a better grasp of the fundamentals. They were able to set up their perspective or their shapes up quickly and so they could move to colors whilst i was still struggling with things like the perspective and i was just spending a lot more time but i think that's actually very important to do in the beginning because if you kind of skip that s step sometimes it it really fucks you up mm, <laughs> like yeah. in the future so and it's still kind of I, and i still get hiccups from that it, i'm still trying to learn and what was the reason? Why did you start it? Why did you start the daily sketches and um, 
doing the studies was it um, kind of just for your for yourself to learn more mm -hmm. or also you felt like because I've seen what I was in, would be interested in and maybe the audience as well is like how do you um, see the social media um, aspect and all that especially when you're freelancing how important is being uh, is it being out there being active posting stuff how often would you yeah. post um, and so yeah. on and so forth yeah um, that's, a, that's a quite a lot um, so I kind of you know it, it all started whilst I was at the concept art studio and it was a, a concern raised by Uh, other artists at the concept art studios that whilst we were working on so many cool projects you know we were working for like uh, I don't know Deep Silver or Ubisoft or all these cool studios a lot of these things either ended up in NDA so you are or they just get cancelled or they'll right. just be in development hell and it's really frustrating for artists to do a lot of cool stuff but not be able to to show it show it and it, it kind of feels a little deflating sometimes uh, I, I I don't think all artists are like this but certainly I feel like a lot of art, artists certainly have a certain ego to them they, they do want to be recognized that what they do matters and that they are being seen that they are somewhat relevant I think that's why a lot of us kind of express ourselves this way right instead of through making music or writing we, we, we do it through our artwork so uh, Our art director at the time, Bjorn Hury, who actually still does his uh, daily uh, drawings, like 30 minute character drawings, um, told everyone in the studio, like, okay, uh, why you mean, not? Uh, Bjorn, Bjorn, Bjorn uh, Hury from uh, Opus yeah. Arts? Oh, yeah, okay, right. Yeah. yeah, so he encouraged us all to start doing this 30 minutes to an hour thing cool. at the beginning of the day or before work starts um, as a way to. A polish our skills because a lot of the people at the studio were still learning and then B also maybe try to explore more of our own personal portfolio so if you think about it like this maybe let's say a, a general complete piece takes about five to six hours if you do like an hour a day at it it you quickly can reach to that point but if you just want to sit down and just You know, grind it out. It, it seems a lot more daunting. But if you do, if you chip away at it, you can probably produce something that you can put on a portfolio and show people. Or you could just do little things to feel like you're polishing up your skills and such. Interesting point. Yeah, I was, I was. Uh, well, I knew him from back then from his art that he posted, and there are the, those very iconic kind of art pieces I think uh, that you have in, in your mind when you think about certain artists and he had this yeah. one where he did these uh, I think steampunk kind of um, Star Wars characters yeah 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 those are the very first ones I remember on CG Hop or where it was and later on when he had this Kickstarter campaign uh, I figured that oh yeah it's it's actually him and mm -hmm. he had this twitch channel that I saw that where he would, you know, squeeze in like one hour doing sketches. I was like, man, that's super cool. I don't know yeah. how he does it. I, I think I could do he it. He works really fast. He, yes, yeah. yes. It's very efficient. But also like doing it at home in your free time during lunch. And if you have family, especially not right now but during the pandemic, it's a big deal. It's like, like um, something small. So I uh, have, um, yeah, I, I have great respect for that when somebody's doing this. Um, so, how, how do you see that? Like, do um, you think that is something that brings you further? Because there's always a balance as well, doing something, mm -hmm. producing art for the sake of getting likes and being out there and having this exposure on social media. Yeah. But also, of course, you don't want to show stuff that you did in a rush in one hour, ends up being maybe not high quality. Um, yeah. And that's what I'm struggling with, where I see, like, I think I should, you know, I like doing sketches and all that, exploring things, of course. but sometimes I would rather spend more time on doing things and not posting so much stuff out, um, you know? Yeah, um, well, that was like, um, so as part of the thing of doing these warm-ups, it was also kind of, for me personally, to get all of this hiccup about perfection. 
I when every time I saw a lot of artists post their work, and I guess Daily Spit Paint was a thing as well.、Mm-hmm. But every time I saw other people's artwork, I always thought, "Wow, they're amazing! Like, how can they come up with things in 30 minutes?" Or, or you know, or people come up with these super polished work, and it's so perfect. I find at, at the time, you know, I had all these people to admire, like. I don't know. Just generically speaking, like Craig Mullins or a Sparf, and he posts something. You're like,、right. how? How? I, I don't. I don't want to post anything because I feel like it'd be embarrassing. Like, I don't want people to judge me. So, as a thing to get over this、uh, personal ego, I suppose.、Uh, I I was just doing these drawings that you know, I I don't have, so I can just just do it and then post it. And just forget about it, and that was a way of me trying to get over like a fear of posting. But at the same time, it was also to stop me. I guess also another thing about when you're new is that you had a hop. I had a habit in particular about like noodling on like my artwork, like just like trying to refine it, even though what I was doing without having、awful. any time limit and、uh, like a deadline.、Right? Yeah. 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 And basically, it just wasn't really changing anything in the bigger picture. It was just, it was just a lot of pointless details that I was just focusing on, and that's probably how my artwork this day kind of evolved.、Uh, I guess people see a lot of my artwork quite graphic and quite bot, like just big colors and big brushy marks, and it's and it's all kind of developed because. You know, I only have like 30 minutes to an hour, or maybe more, depending how I feel about the piece,、um, to accomplish something and to show it to people. And、right. it, it was it was kind of a way to get over that is by, you know, duplicating brushes, duplicating things、uh, like noisy brushes or just big blocks of colors or shapes, just to, you know, cheat the eye into seeing、uh, things for people. Right.、Um, yeah, it's 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 kind of a challenge, like doing stuff that you like and、um, that you want to put out there. Like what I I felt like most of the time when I was doing speed paintings or something, I felt I liked it first, and then I looked at it a couple of minutes hours later, and it was just crappy, and I re- had this regret.、Um, But you were talking about in, like something very interesting, and that's an in- interesting factor. The the time factor, having、mm-hmm. a deadline and having、um, having a time limit where you need to accomplish something, and that needs to work. And that's a scenario where I felt I'm more efficient, a more、mm-hmm. I I can pull off way more. Things in a short amount of time were highly focused, and I think I, I did something. I achieved something good, even though maybe it's not super polished in the end. Depends on the time, of course. But、um, yeah, I agree. I think that's something that is interesting. That you set yourself a realistic、um, deadline or a time slot where you say, okay,、yeah. one hour.、Uh, that's feasible. So. How do you see right now being on social media, being so active, and you know, killing it like you like putting stuff <laughs> up there like every every crazy day?、Um, do do you feel this has affects your、um, your job offers or let me put it this way like、um, do you feel there's more communication and、uh, there are more opportunities due to that? Yeah,、um, absolutely. You know, it's it's kind of funny because the reason why I did environment sort of dailies is because I fucking sucked at environments. I I as I was telling you, I I started off as a figure kind of artist.、Right. I, I was doing life drawing. I I thought I wanted to do character art. You know, I thought I wanted to do like you know just fucking cute anime or brutal dark fantasy characters.、Yeah. No, I just It didn't click like that. It seems like my brain just ended up being more of this environment sort of guy who just likes to play around with color and stuff. And、um, 
Yeah, from that, it, a lot of my job offers these days are from my daily paintings because people are seeing how I maybe I approach these um, studies and how I choose to design my shapes or color. And it's, I guess, also my style works quite well uh, on a lot of social media platform. It's it's very accessible, mm. I suppose, because a lot of the things I do is kind of like plain air sort of drawings. They like they like nice landscapes or um, just urban scenes or, and such. So people can have a grasp of it. Whilst if maybe uh, if I was like a dark fantasy guy, maybe it would actually like not as many people will probably engage with it because not as many people it's a bit more niche right um and from that it seems like w with getting more and more popularity and exposure and you know word of mouth or just people sharing your stuff um people from studios and stuff do see your art and they're like this is pretty cool uh we, we want these sorts of designs or style or environments in our, you know, in our world, and people start to ask for more and more work. And I think a lot of work in general now is moving towards people asking you for jobs through. I, I mean, I don't know if it's the same for you, but about ninety percent of my job offers are actually from my social media accounts. Interesting. You know? So it's not LinkedIn. It's like. No. Instagram, whatever. Yeah, I, I do get some from LinkedIn, but pretty much it was mostly from, you know, Instagram, Twitter. And I don't know if it's because simply because the art community is such a tight knit uh, community in itself. When one artist likes your stuff and they do decide to share, it's not, I don't think it's unusual for if an art director was to see it or you know, especially if a prolific artist is to share your artwork um, very soon, especially when your popularity grows, it, I can see it like just sort of moving up the, uh, the ladder and then people seeing it, they're like, okay, this, this could work for our show or, or game or whatnot. So, well, I mean, and, um, yeah. yeah, continue, sorry. Uh, no, no, go ahead. Uh, I, I kind of lost my thought for a second. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, do you, like, what would be the advice for somebody who's um, starting a free, freelance career? And mm -hmm. how much time do you need to spend on social media and doing your own work daily to, mm -hmm. to get there? What, what would be your answer? What do you think? So. People don't need to be like a maniac like me or other artists like, you know, <laughs> Bjorn Hury or a Beeble, you know, people who do day, like a drawing per day. There is much more sustainable ways of working and, you know, like you can base. I think Bobby Chu has that here, a very good explanation. Like maybe you can start something from the beginning, you can do like uh, like throwback Thursday, like share an old drawing or and then maybe uh, you can do like uh, whip whip Wednesdays or something. I don't mm. I can't remember what was, but just show like a work in progress on a Wednesday and then maybe uh, sh uh, what they call like shout out Saturdays or Sundays and you shout out artists. And basically you just need to keep engagement on your on your profile to retain people that see you on their feed because uh, I, I guess, I mean, I, I'm not the most in tune about how these social network things work, but right. the, the thing at least it is that I understand is that social media engagement is quite important to retain followers or to gain followers. If you drop out of the dark and, you know, and then resume six months later, like the amount of engagement on your posts is going to be a lot lower and that's again, someone prolific sees your artwork and they share it on their social media and hopefully, you know, but that, but that's kind of, gam you're kind of gambling at that point. So you rather just show consistency of maybe just doing little things here and there just to sh show that you're engaged um, right. in your profile. But 
you don't necessarily need to do that because some people are like, oh, so you don't need to show quality work. You just do a lot of like shitty sketches, share it online. No, that's not necessarily true. Like a good example would be someone like Paul Chadelson. He posts maybe once a month, maybe, but his work is epic and he has a lot of followers and his engagement is very high. And, it, right. and it's, I believe also in quality of posts as well, you know? And that that is like on a different side of the spectrum in itself. So you would say the secret of it all is uh, the combination of different approaches, yeah. like being having different um, solutions when you cannot produce art, like let's say um, Throwback Thursdays, etc. Um, but just taking care of all that social media. How much time yeah. does it take for you daily? Like liking things, exploring things, um, mm -hmm. uploading stuff on, on different platforms. Um, is there one way to upload artwork on one uh, platform and then it uploads it everywhere? Like th that's something yeah. that is so time consuming. And that's why like we had a chat before as well, mm -hmm. where I reached out to you and I'm like, how can you deal with that? Like, I know it's also, It depends on the background, like everybody has different backgrounds. Some people have a family and so on. And right. I think you're, uh, you don't have a family yet. You don't have kids, right? Not yet, no. Yes. <laughs> so there, of course, there's a bit more time you have and more flexibility. Mm -hmm. Of course. But um, still, like even being alone and like living solo is, uh, it's a challenge. Like it takes a lot of time. How do you, how much time do you need? and What do you, you yourself? Yeah. Um. So I guess I'll add a disclaimer. Like, so I understand how addictive social media can be, and I'm really trying to reduce my consumption of being on social media because it can affect you, especially when something uh, more contentious happens in society, right. you know, some political whatnot. Um. But I would say, on average. Uh, in the morning, I do my 30 to 60 minute warm up drawing. I post and I'll spend about probably 30 minutes, uh, you know, posting on all my social media and then maybe trying to engage a little bit with what's happening, maybe so resharing art. On each platform separately, right? So you go. Not 30 minutes on each one. That's probably how much, it, how much time it takes. For all. Um, yeah. So what I usually do is. I just try to post and then I try to just drop out from the media. Like I do a quick scroll of just to see what's what's happening. And if I see anything I like, I would probably share it or comment about it. Not not because I'm actually like, oh, this is to get social media engagement. It's actually because I genuinely like a lot of, no, of course. people are doing. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you like I sharing and uh, you, yeah. you admire the art. Especially, Yeah, and especially more like unknown artists, because I know how it feels to be an unknown artist. And I guess it's something uh, people don't usually get to see. For the first two to three years of me posting daily, I, I was only getting like 12 to 20 likes. And most of them were from my family. Like my mom's like, oh, that's weird. What are you drawing? Like, oh, that's a cute flower you drew. <laughs> no, it, it was just people that I knew. Mm. But it seems like, you know, it, it took, you know, and now, Up to now, I'm on my sixth or seventh year just posting as much as I can daily or engaging with people. So it, it does take time. That That's just another disclaimer as well. You're not going to get it immediately unless your art is, your artwork is already on that level mm. where you're ready to be employed by big studios, you know? Right. Uh, but yeah, I, I only spend about 30, I try to spend about 30 minutes, no more than an hour in the morning. Uh, just trying to engage and just posting things and then in the evenings i just do a quick check uh just like just to share or engage or to answer any emails or things that have come back um so i guess all in all i've tried to say no more i say minimums probably about 45 minutes to 60 minutes and then on the higher end of probably about two hours but i'm trying to reduce that amount of time because I've, I'm finding that a lot of the time that I'm actually just wasting time. Right. 
So you scrolling. limit yourself as well, like where you say, okay, yeah. that's it, upload it, yeah. if you like seeing their interactions, and that's it. And then when mm -hmm. you have to work on your freelance, um, your job, your daily job, then you, you put it away, your cell phone, you, you Yeah, I try to put it, I put it in a separate room, because it's too tempting just to right. see it. But even then, I still have the internet on my computer, so you could just end up just type in facebook.com and just seeing what's there but most of the time nothing's really happening to be honest okay then you get hooked very fast I... yeah it's, it's very easy <laughs> and you, you don't sometimes you don't figure out that you get lost <laughs> yeah 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 this, that's how addiction works you don't you don't even realize that you're you're on something right yeah when you work and sit um, a few hours per day, um, mm -hmm. I think eight hours you work doing freelance jobs and then you said you have like um, roughly two, two hours in the morning or one to one and a half hours um, mm -hmm. doing your dailies and posting and stuff. How do you balance, um, what do you do besides painting and everything to keep yourself healthy. Um, I saw yeah. you're also into uh, martial, art, uh, martial arts and that's something yeah. very interesting as well because we always talk as artists about like, yeah, you need to work a lot to be better and here and there, but there's one interesting point um, and something very important that people don't talk, talk much about, uh, which is um, doing sports, right? So right. how much time do you spend there? and how, how do you feel about doing sports? Do you think it's like um, something that makes you also better doing your art, producing your art? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. Um, so before COVID, before this world disaster happened, uh, I used to go and aside from running, I used to go to uh, like a martial arts gym. And uh, I used to do like MMA, I used to do Muay Thai. Uh, I used to do like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and stuff and I would do it for about an hour or two and then come home and then uh, if I have more freelance I'll continue freelance or if not I'll just chill out um, but I've been doing that for you know most of my life I've been doing Taekwondo since I was four cool. and yeah and before I was gonna go to London and study my MA I was still training and I thought if I couldn't get into my MA I was gonna go to Thailand and compete in Muay Thai and then become a, uh, you know, I, I wanted to teach Muay Thai and also compete in Muay Thai or kickboxing because wow. that's what I was interested in at the time. Um, thankfully, I get to keep my brain cells. I don't have to get my head kicked in now. Um, but I, I think uh, doing sports in general is just really important for, you know, aside from uh, physical health it's also mental health you know uh, mentally it's one of the few times in a day that I can finally shut my brain down and not think about drawing uh, sometimes I get so stressed out from just work or like not being able to understand what the uh, you know what the client wants or just not sort of fulfilling what I felt like was as good as I f felt or maybe I submitted something and I got proved but then I realized like ah shit like I could have done that just a little bit better but now I can't go back to it and you know it kind of haunts you but then when for me when I start doing sports it's I it just shuts that all down you know and it just quiets my brain and physically what when I was able to uh, you know do martial arts and stuff um, I felt like I had a little bit less especially in our occupations uh, in our occupation, especially if you're freelancing at home, um, lower back pain, right. uh, shoulder pain, carpal tunnel, neck pain, you know, that's this is all occupational hazard. And you're going to get it inevitably. But what you could do is you can kind of strengthen your body from it getting worse. So I think doing martial arts is really important because it strengthens my muscles, my core, uh, my posture and stuff so it doesn't get as bad my tendons and stuff in particular as well so 
I, I feel like maybe it makes things not as bad. I mean, I'm not a scientist or anything or a doctor, so don't take my word for it. But I, I did feel like I was getting less work related injuries when I was able to exercise a lot. And, you know, I, I, being able to stretch and exercise is really important. Um, Cause you know, I guess the stereotype of an artist is that we're all kind of like these, just a bunch of nerds who just sit sit around on the canvas or computer, right. and we're not, you know, we're not really looking after ourselves. We just eat like Cheetos and drink Mountain <laughs> Dew and stuff. Like no, like I, I don't think we have to be that stereotype. We I think we can work to be healthier for ourselves. And you don't even have to do martial arts. Just do something else that you enjoy. Um, I guess now, especially in COVID, it's been particularly difficult. I felt, even for me, I felt like I've been slacking off a bit, but what I've been doing with my wife in particular is that we've been going on our daily runs. We run for about, uh, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes around the park. We try to also do a lot of yoga now. And, and I do a lot of uh, body weight exercises at home. Just, just bare minimum, just to, keep me alive you know like it because there's another thing that happens when you freelance is that especially during covid is that you actually end up working more hours or whatnot especially if you have i'm guessing if you have kids and stuff um you know or just being at home you have to cook dinner you gotta do grocery shopping you gotta look after your kids you gotta do x y and z and before you know it you're actually instead of just doing eight hours of work that it's been set for your, you know, by your student. If you're working at a studio, you know, you clock in, you clock out. It isn't that anymore. You're working like, uh, let's say you work from eight o'clock and you could be ending, ended up working at like 12 o'clock at night because you have to be jumping in and out of scenarios all day long. And I think it's really important right. that you just try to keep yourself healthy mentally and physically. Um, Right. Yeah. What what I feel like um, because in the beginning when I did I started uh, doing graphic design for four years was mm -hmm. uh, commuting um, two two hours per day sitting eight hours um, at school doing art um, for you as well right and you did that over the years um, mm -hmm. second education was like game art game design for me um, another three years commuting. That was not. Mm -hmm. That was like uh, commuting three hours per day, and oh. on on the weekends I would, you know, I would have to earn some money. So I was driving taxi on the weekends. Some of my art friends they know, <laughs> so this um, it's it's crazy because those were night shifts on the weekends, twelve mm -hmm. hours sitting again, and I was yeah. not really taking care of, you know health and i thought yeah man like i'm mid 20s beginning like beginning of the 20s and i can still do all that but it, after a while like you figure it out if you don't have the core uh, muscles and the structure to to support that kind of posture sitting all day long not standing up having those breaks um it can uh, yeah fuck you up like it's that literally yeah, like happened to me uh, some people are ending, you know, having a herniated disc or something, yeah. and that yeah. you feel like all of a sudden you're like <laughs> end of twenties. You feel like forty five something, you know. Right. Um, and I think yeah, that's that's uh, pretty interesting that that you've been doing uh, that for a while. You said that it also has an impact on your um, mental health. Do you like there's a study what what I've heard um, that people can learn better um, when they're at the university or something when they have also breaks for sports and other activities actually. Mm -hmm. Do you think it improves your creativity as well? I think so. I think there's a lot of reinforced learning and you know like for example anatomy you start to realize those things about the human body. If you were to do uh, animation, you learn that if you're in a martial arts sports, you, you see how people move and you can figure out ways to like exaggerate the human's body and and how, just little weird muscles that you just never see. Uh, usually you can see that in like, while you're doing martial arts. 
um but also uh oh my god i lost my thought <laughs> again um uh, what were you asking again sorry creativity um you know do you feel it has also an impact on your creativity yeah um, when um you do more sports yeah and again well like i said like sports for me is kind of where i get to not think about doing work or drawing it's it's for me personally a hard reset for the it's like like my little reset for the day like uh you know no matter what how hard work is or what's going on in my personal life whatnot i always felt like i could always fall back to doing uh, my martial arts or running just to reset my day and just to give myself some time and perspective in particular if you're frustrated watch yeah. when you have yeah. anger and you accumulate anger yeah. i think that's something uh, that helps a lot as well right like when you yeah. go out and well in your case you would punch somebody well, <laughs> <laughs> i mean i haven't done that yet but it just um you know at the time you know especially with anger or stress you tend to be a little bit more irrational you know after the gym especially you know like i'm doing sparring session you get beaten the crap out of for like an hour and a half or something you, you're just like oh what was i angry about like you're just too tired and too like bruised to even like bother like oh okay it's not that bad i'll, I'll figure it out you know um yeah it's, i just think it's really important just to get a little bit of perspective great when it comes to for the future do you have any any goals you want to achieve anything um long term that you have in your mind where you think that's something you were quite interested in that you want to a project oh, you want to do or uh, okay. uh for now you know uh i just i guess i'm still young enough that i and i'm still quite hungry in the industry that i just keep i want to work for more uh, prolific studios and work on more uh, prolific sort of projects um, and just sort of keep on accumulating my experience and try to work with more and more people on things that i i find interesting because you know even though i'm quite young in the industry i'm moving to my fifth year as a professional i'm learning that even though there are some jobs that pay really well sometimes i just don't give a fuck about the project that much it just doesn't feel satisfying it's like yeah it was easy for me to do and i did it but sometimes i'm just like it doesn't feel very fulfilling i want to hopefully be on projects where you not know, also do i feel like it it was meaningful that it was something i can look back on and it's like this is good experience i was able to also earn a bit of money on the side and look after my family i think these things are quite important for me as an artist and I, if i ever lose the hunger to sort of learn more in art and also sort of do projects i think maybe that's probably when i <laughs> should probably think about other other things but for now i i just feel like i'm quite hungry in the industry i want to work on cool things i want to work with nice people in particular that's another thing i'm learning like, just work with nice people it's it's better that way man it's, even if it's cool if the person is not nice just forget about it right do you do you feel sometimes you have to do jobs just because there is nothing and you regret it afterwards and you don't feel yeah. fulfilled a lot yeah i mean uh especially when i first went freelance i was um, i think in my first year i think i only became freelance in the second half of 2019 and then not before long then i think in february it was covid i was panicked i i only just started to earn a little bit of money but people were talking about furloughs and losing jobs so i took on way too much work i was on like four or five projects with big to small studios i was doing about 12 to 14 hours a day wow like like you know monday to sunday and then repeat for about four months and what happened with that was that you know you end up 
without myself realizing at the time, I was burning myself out. I was just kind of like autopilot, you know, and I was still doing all the social media, my daily drawings on top of that. So I was just being an absolute maniac. So it's really important that you kind of have to check yourself. Things like it's it's important to be thirsty and to earn money whilst you can, whilst you're young. But it's also really important to look after yourself, you know. Right. Especially when it comes to burnout, and especially in a very. I mean, it's really hard not to talk about, it, but we, we're living in a COVID era. It's such a stressful time. You can't see your family. I can't go out and do martial arts. I can't go out and do a lot of things. I can't even go out to see friends. I can't go out to go out just to eat, you know, or go to see a museum. Just very like casual things.、Mm. But you don't realize that all these things will add up. And for me personally, I also had a member of my family pass away, and that was. A lot of these things all sort of converged in one moment in twenty twenty twenty. So you know, I because of all that thing accumulating, I had to take a month off, just no work, just spend time with my family, and just try to reset myself.、Mm. And and then from there, I didn't get into work immediately. I just slowly reintroduced it. First month, just a little bit, maybe I do two or three pieces of. A week, and then more and more as you know, as the weeks or months go by. Yeah, it yeah. definitely had a big impact. Like in things where you wouldn't maybe at first you wouldn't see it, right? Like where you feel a few months in that what kind of impact it has. Like not going to a restaurant, not seeing friends, not having this chit chat with、uh, each other, not seeing people in person. Um, and then personal、um, issues and things that are also playing a role in that. And that's good that you had the strength to do that because most of the people would still grind it. I think till their body or you know mentally they they shut down. Yeah. I mean, you know, I about myself. Like I, I find it very hard to express myself just. Because the way I was brought up, I I just tend to grind my teeth and not think about it. And really,、um, but the person who, like, you know, for me personally was my wife. She really helped me like open up about how I feel, and then realizing that I was actually stressed out about work, or that I was, you know, maybe a bit depressed, or I was burnt out.、Mm-hmm. You know, I think having, I mean, it's easy for me to say because I've I've got. My wife and I got my mom. That I can talk to, but for other people, I hope that you know they ha- they have someone that they can talk to. Maybe even it's not family member, maybe a friend that they can trust.、Uh, they can talk to. Right.、Uh, these things are really important,、uh, especially in our industry. I feel like as cool it is to be a a, a rock star artist. You know, people think, oh, he's got like X amount of views. On their or X amount of followers on their fucking account, like I think what they don't really see is that art artists are kind of、uh, kind of like an exploited class of people. Like we we do get to do the, all this work, but we don't really get all the glory. Like you know, Spider Verse. Spider Verse is cool. All these Pixar movies are cool, but like all the money goes to the studios in the end of the day. The, a lot of these artists have to work really hard, and they, they they got all this really cool thing to show the world. But at the end of the day, they still got bills to pay. They got things to worry about. You know, we're, a lot of us are still human. We're not above above anyone just because we have this way of thinking through drawing. You know.、Mm. Good point. Yeah, I like they own all the rights, right? And、right. the stuff like doesn't mean like there are a lot of other people who play a big role in that. You know, there are people coming up with the idea, the narrative、uh, when it comes to a game studio.、Um, there are a lot of creative people getting together and creating that whole thing. Of course, it's not just the artist, but we have to admit and have to say、um, that it's definitely the artist who is. Because they are very passionate about what they're doing, that、mm-hmm. they sacrifice a lot. Like、mm-hmm. to be honest, like if I look around and you know, not criticizing anybody in other fields, but from all the other、um, 
niches um, when it comes to uh, within game, uh, you know, game development. When I look at game designers, um, you know, narrative uh, people like doing storytelling, etc. Mm -hmm. Not everybody of these guys is going home doing, you know, his personal stuff, and people are start like doing coding and all that. No, like most of the people I know are 3D artists, concept artists, um, visual development artists, um, storyboard artists, etc. And of course that means those people are more passionate about what they're doing and they put more of the time and the effort into it. And that's why I think why we also feel more affected when, you know, a lot of artists just get, you know, underpaid a lot. And it's shocking yeah. sometimes to hear what people accept and what they're willing um, to accept to get a certain job. And that's something <clears throat> I would I would never do. The thing is also, of course, you can always say, you know, you're not in the position, you don't have to feed like two kids, and you're not married, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, it's like you are actually the, the, the issue or you're actually causing all that trouble because you're willing to take those jobs, right? And um, I think that's something people need to be aware of. And probably you've seen this as well. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, there were people like um, back then putting out their, um, their, their salaries. And mm -hmm. well, it was on Twitter and, uh, you know, they talked about the salary in general, how much an yeah. artist should charge here and there. And people were complaining like hey how dare you you charge this much for your you know right anime art whatever right and uh was Car carla ortiz she was also yeah putting her i got a lot to say about that sort of stuff yeah, yeah. so what, yeah. what are your thoughts so, so one of my reasons why i went freelance was because you know i got married i have a wife now and you know we're trying to think about having a family trying to maybe own our own apartment or house, you know, have a lot of certain things in our life in place. But at the time, uh, I'm not gonna, you know, like, I'm not gonna, I have a lot to be thankful for at Opus Arts. I love all the people there. Um, they gave me the opportunity. They gave it to someone who literally had zero skill and zero reason to be hired, you know, I was not very good as an artist and they trained me up from, from the bottom and then got me up to a level where I'm, you know, I'm okay. I was an okay concept artist, you know, I, I would never say I, I was, I'm great, you know. I was just okay to get by and do the job and get it done, you know, and submit something by the end of the day. But one of the issues I had is because they hire, and a lot of studios kind of do this in fact, uh, is that they hire people with very lo little experience or maybe they're straight out from like a university or maybe they're up and coming artists but they again it's also they don't have maybe the experience or their uh, education credentials and they hire these people as on a low salary and even though i worked for them essentially for three years my i i saw that my salary wasn't growing and for what I was earning, it was just good enough to survive in a city like London. And London is known it's to nuts. be expensive. Yeah. It's at least rent wise, because there's no proper rent control. You could pay a lot of money for a very small place, you know, and you're sharing with people. It's, and that's something that I didn't want to be doing when I was married and I had a wife. It was okay for the, maybe the first six months you know mm, to get but having your wife yeah. live live with you in your you know one bedroom but sharing with other roommates it's kind of embarrassing you know right of course you know and you've been working in this place for a while so one of the things i had to do was i had to remove myself from the studio i had i started taking on a lot of freelance on the side whilst i was at the studio and then gradually wean myself off from the studio and become independent and it's not an opportunity that a lot of people have but it's something that they should really think about and that's why i think 
social media is so important because it's especially now it's the first time that an artist has the ability to perhaps shape their destiny to handle to really um to really market themselves you know um they don't need a gallery to create them they don't need uh, a magazine you can put your stuff out for free on you know instagram or twitter right. you can make a youtube account and talk about drawing right. you can make a twitch account to engage with people about drawing and stuff um there's so many ways and avenues like patreons and gum roads and uh, your art station you know all these little things and i guess I mean, I won't talk too much about it, but NFT is now a, a really like contentious subject at the moment. Mm. It's it's a, right, especially for these big artists that I've seen. I know that it's the first time, and a lot of them kind of live like okay lifestyles or middle class lifestyles. But it's the first time in their life where they can finally earn enough money for themselves where they don't have to worry for maybe a year you know the amount that they can earn can finally mean that oh maybe they can finally put a deposit on a house because especially where most artists live we're all living in the big cities because that's where all the jobs are right mm, you know, right london la paris uh tokyo whatnot you know these are fucking expensive places and with this type of avenue it really does open up new things for us. Uh, it's a really interesting age um, that is really. I'm looking forward to how it gets molded, but at the same time, I can see all the problems that arises from it. Or the yeah, yeah. Of course, it's, it's yeah. It's it's like still the beginning, but um, of course, like it's a revolution, right? And. Uh, for the people who don't know, um, probably because our channel is also very much of a niche, but uh, NFTs are purely digital art pieces that you can buy over mm -hmm. the blockchain. Right now it's Ethereum and they are called NFTs, which are non-fungible tokens. And it's it's nuts when you like when you see people also bragging, right? Like with or those platforms are putting out numbers that where you think, oh my God, it's it's crazy. But I'm super, and everybody uh, within mm -hmm. the industry is like super excited because that would put us in a position where we become mm -hmm. even more independent, as you said. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you could do whatever you want. Um, you sell two, three pieces maybe. I, I've seen some already, um, um, you know, people, they, they started out on super rare sold like four pieces and uh his yearly salary like probably he made more um mm -hmm. that he would make in the studio within one month right and yeah you could do the stuff that you like to do you don't have to do what people ask you to do i mean how frustrating is it that all the time you know as you said you do things for the trash bin all the time mm -hmm. there are projects that don't end up being uh, shown or you have to produce art. Too many, man. Too yeah, many for uh, me. Oh, <laughs> ask me. <laughs> and like, uh, also, you know, it's mostly also stuff that maybe you don't like. Or you get to ask to, you know, do, do things in a certain way um, uh, because somebody told you to do so. And you, you know, as an artist, yeah, that was a, not a good decision, but some people have sometimes strong opinions and right. uh, feel like, um, you know, uh, yes, ha they have to, to argument and talk about a, a lot of things, even though it's not their, their niche and they're not right. in that field, right? Talking about this and being independent, this could even mean maybe um yeah correct me if i'm wrong but like a friend of mine was just recently saying it could mean that we become the next you know uh, kind of pop stars or you know um stars like s stars within like sports and stuff where mm -hmm. people are like trying to you know they have to fight for an artist to get him more like they have to do it already but imagine um 
all these artists they can sell <laughs> nfts they get independent who would do the job in the game studios who would do the job for movies right like if i would make right. more money there like they they need to put something on the table where i would say yeah yeah that's freaking cool i'll do that not just because it's a cool project but also the money it has to you know it needs to be worth it you know they cannot sell yeah. peanuts mm -hmm. what do you think like do you think we would become the next you know people who will be at I mean, doing art pop stars? i mean maybe um i think art like our side of drawing is still niche regardless um i mean there, there's only very s small amount of people have really True. broken up broken through our industry and become something maybe uh i guess mainstream people may who know about them like uh frank frazetta or uh yoshitaka amano or maybe a, a glenn keen sort of situation you know these these are but these are you know they're like one percenters even in our industry our our industry even though it's close-knit it's still huge there's a lot of people trying to climb and there's True. so many competent people within our industry right. and even artists who are not even on social media but their art is absolutely stunning but for whatever reason they just never got the same traction as these big names like a chuck jones or whatnot they're just you know they're just people True. who just sort of go job to job and um well i mean if it does end up that way i i still think uh even if there is an artist superstar, um, it'd still be a very small amount, you know. True. Um, I mean, from this, uh, I guess, fine arty side, I guess well-known people would be like, you know, David Cho, maybe, like uh, Ai Weiwei, you know, they're, you can kind of know them, but they're not, Yeah. they're, they're still kind of niche in their cells, you know, you can have, I, I still think that like, even if you have like, five million followers there's still people who don't even know you yeah but of course it's it, yeah but it's so interesting if it is if it does end up that way i mean it does certainly open up more and more avenues for artists and people like uh these you know the person who blew out recently Bebo, uh mike winkleman uh you know he he did have because of the thing he does he does have opportunities to work for companies like gucci or or Adidas or something like that, you know. For the Which, people who don't know, can you uh, elaborate? Like, can you say what just recently happened? With oh yeah, so uh, Bebo, aka Mike Winkleman, uh, he made like 70 million uh, selling his 5,000 a day on, is it Christie's or, or Sotheby's? Yeah, it's it one of those Christie's, engineering yeah. sites, at Christie's, uh, which is now, I think it's like the third highest auctioned artwork ever in history of a right living behind, artist, right yeah yeah living artists as well as behind david hockney and jeff jeff coons or something which is absolutely insane that's stuff that i used to study in art history these prolific you know modernist artists or who <laughs> sort of live in this strange elitist world that regular folks who wouldn't necessarily know unless you studied in university or you're at the upper end of society now people like like us i guess could potentially make that type of money you know yeah it's, um, it's but, crazy and or, also the, the like purely digital artwork right like for the people who don't know digital. it was one of those nfts that was sold for the first time through um yeah, one of the established biggest uh, auction houses out there, Christie's. And it's crazy because what happens if the blockchain is not there anymore? Like, you lost it, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I'm so like split about it. You know, I, at one point, I, I, I like the idea of artist independence, but at the same time, like, it just seems like such an unsafe avenue. At the moment, and also I guess environmental impact. I I won't talk too much about it because I am not really the right person to talk about it. I I really don't know enough about it to be honest. I've done some reading, but I'm not an expert. I don't understand it as clearly as other people. But it's just uh, it, it's it's a weird time to be. It's exciting, but at the same time, I'm also quite scared. <laughs> at the same right. time, it's it's uh, yeah, it's. 
it's a very contentious time we live in. Right. Yeah, it's it's very like uh, there are a lot of uh, environmental concerns as well because uh, it has a minting art, creating art digitally on the blockchain is like very um, yeah like energy um, heavy. Like you need a lot of. I think I've heard um, you need to have the. It would. I think it was like the electricity mm -hmm. is being used for minting one artwork. Um, the amount of electricity is been used that a U European citizen would use uh, in like a lifetime. Like no, not a lifetime, but two months or something. Oh, so I mean, there's, there's this some crazy nice. comparisons right? though. So yeah, like we don't know how much uh, how much electricity it would cost you. Um, mm -hmm. Um, you know when you do I don't know like other things uh, people are arguing that the servers uh, of those big social media platforms Twitter Instagram etc they're also running 24 seven days per week right so everything has kind of an impact but it clearly seems that uh, minting artwork and maintaining all that and is a big deal and right now you see everybody wants to become an artist or artist right now or everybody considers yeah. <laughs> himself an artist there's so much trash art out there so you have curated platforms like super rare and um, nifty gateways etc but um, on rarible and uh, OpenSea, literally like everybody can mint their own artwork create it there upload it and um, yeah there is like stuff where you it's debatable, right? Um, I'm not the person who would argue this is art and this is not, but yep. it's clearly that thing where you see a lot of uh, people um, yeah, jumping on the train right now, trying to make some um, money and flip coins, right? Yeah. Henry, it's been a pleasure talking to you. By the way, yes. you need to give me, um, you need to tell me where you got this jacket, this fancy jacket. I really like um, it. Oh man, I do, you gotta ask my wife. I have no idea where she got it from. <laughs> you could probably search it online. I'll do. You, you, will, yeah. you will have to ask her that. <laughs> it's, it's a yeah, absolute pleasure being on your podcast. I feel like I haven't talked to people in a long time. so It's good, it's right? A bit, it's a little awkward, but it's good for me. You know, I was like, oh, how do you talk again? How, how do we engage? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really, it's, it's really cool. Um, that we live in a time where we have the opportunity to talk to each other uh, through this technology. It's just amazing. Sometimes still we take it all for granted, but we should. Yeah. We should be grateful for this. And that's also the reason why I started it because um, I feel like and I said that before, but I feel like being, especially in the pandemic right now, and yeah. not being able to talk to people, go to workshops, meet people in person. Uh, it, I can feel it. like I, it has an impact definitely so yeah I'm even more grateful that you took the time talking to me and maybe there's another time where we can get together again and talk about more stuff yeah absolutely yes yeah thank you for having me and thank you for talking to me I, I haven't talked to people in a long time it's it's kind of weird <laughs> it is, yeah sometimes it is all right dude have a great day and see you next time.